hello friends, this is David Both. Today is April 13th, 2015. It's great to see everybody. I have amazing things to share with you today. Um, I haven't made a video for a couple of days. I've been um, I've been on a I guess a little archaeological digging. Um, kind of sounds strange here in America. We always think of people going to you know do these crazy mysterious finds somewhere in Africa or something. But um, there is a lot of stuff that has not been investigated very much here in in the United States. I live in New Mexico and some of the most mysterious things are found here. Um, it goes all the way up into Colorado and of course, you know, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona, and Idaho. For whatever reason, here is where you find all the wonderful things. I went to a place that is very difficult to find, friends. Um, it doesn't look like the government really wants anybody to know about this. Now you can uh, see this here is the mountain at the very bottom looking up as you go up this canyon. Um, as I talk I'm going to show you some of the pictures that I took. Um, this is going at the beginning of the, the mountain as you go up the canyon. Now um, there's no signs, there's no, it's very difficult to find this area. I followed some directions that some other people had used that you can find on the internet. But when you get out there, it's kind of difficult to look, to locate. But, um, and there's some stories that I'm going to tell you. Um, after I got there and as I came back down, what happened to me, um, this heavily patrolled. I mean, they will not let you do much. If you get out there and you get in quick and get out quick, I don't think they bother you. But um, it's kind of um, it's kind of odd because uh, a helicopter actually came out there on the way back down. Now, mind you, this helicopter swooped down to where I could see the people in the helicopter, and they were going right straight up this little canyon, following me. So um, it was pretty obvious that they were looking at me and making sure that I wasn't disturbing anything. Um, so I don't know whether or not if a person spent much time there, they would come after you or what. But this is highly protected by the United States government. There's something up there that they don't want us to know. But it's a very beautiful mountain, as you can see. And it's pretty rocky. There's a lot of volcanic rock. There's a lot of just busted up rocks just everywhere. And not like these that you see here. These are more or less just round looking rocks. Um, as you get further up the mountain, you can kind of, you know, see how it, it slopes up. Um, this is only like about a very small portion of the way up of the mountain. And then you come around the bend through this little canyon-like approach. And lo and behold, you see this huge rock. You know, at first you think this is just a rock. But at second glance, there's a little bit more involved. And that is what I'm going to show you today. And I'm going to give you some indications as to what this rock means. There is, you see that it's a big black rock, a normal rock, but at the bottom, it, it looks like it's starting to fall over. I think when they wrote this, on, there's, there's some paleographic Hebrew writing on this rock, friends. And I'm going to show you all this and we're going to talk about it. Now, at this point, you can't see it very well, but this is actually paleographic Hebrew. It's actually the Ten Commandments. You see on the very top where some vandalism in the over the years people have tried to scratch it out and stuff like that. They've you know, it's amazing. And I don't I guess people don't know what they're doing, and so it's kind of hard to blame anybody. But um I don't know they probably just thought it was some writing nobody knew. Now this writing has been there for hundreds of years for certain, we know, because the Native American people say that um these Petroglyphs and all of this writing has been there as long as they've been here. You know, we can go back like 400 years, and it was there when they arrived. Um, so they don't know where it came from. If you ask uh, Native American peoples, even 100 years ago, people had asked wh where where did these writings come from, and the Native Americans have always said they didn't write them. It was here when they got here. 
Now, these particular writings, if you look this up, you're going to find all kinds of information, but very little explanation. Just people talking about it, amazed. They don't know what it is. But I'm going to give you some facts in this video that's going to startle you. Um, it may change a few things that you have known about or believed about our country and our world. As you know, many of you uh, watch some of my videos, and I've got um, I've been doing some investigation on the Sumerian tablets, certain um, issues such as the Nephilim, the Anunnaki, and so forth. But um, stay tuned and you know watch the rest of the video. I think if nothing else, you'll be entertained. But um, this this these writings that you're looking at upon this stone is without a doubt hundreds of years old and it is Hebrew writing. Now there is what paleographic Hebrew looks like. This type of writing was not known to mankind for the last 2,000 years. We've only recently began to understand how to interpret this language. Nobody could have accurately written paleographic Hebrew until the last few years. And especially, say, if even if we're completely way off and made a huge mistake, and this is only 100 or 200 years old. Now, we've got dates that are on the rock where people have come by. One, it's 1871, so that's it's over 100 years right there. We know that it was hundreds of years before that that the, that the writings were there. Now, let's just go back 200 years and imagine that some old cowboy came over the hill and had somehow found some manuscript with all of these symbols and strange you know things and he decided to go ahead and write that on the rock number one he probably wouldn't be able to read it so he wouldn't know what he was writing but it happens to be the ten commandments right out of exodus chapter 20. plus he wouldn't know how to fool us he would have just written it in plain old hebrew which this particular writing that they're, we're looking at is almost exactly paleographic hebrew but it's a little more Phoenician, there's sometimes like an Egyptian character thrown in. It's very odd. So um, it's, it's perplexing, to say the least. Um, but we know that this writing could not have been written by anyone, uh, not the Native Americans that we know over in the last three, four hundred years. They couldn't have written it. Um, it couldn't have been written by some old cowboy. And more than likely, because of the information that we have, it's at least 400 years old. But as we'll find out later, it's probably even far older than that. Um, there's a date star map on one of the rocks that we're going to show you here in a minute that um, Mr. David Deal has determined pinpoints the date as 107 BC. I don't know if that's true. That's his finding. Others have said that this writing, the way it's written, because it's not really written in exact Hebrew, it's more of an ancient paleographic, um, be very difficult for it to have been there before or after 600 BC. So it could even be older than 2,500 years. Now, as we're going up the hill, you'll see here's uh, some of the little scribbles you'll see. A lot of this stuff, many of you are going to say, come on, Dave, this is just some ancient person that was here and they scribbled some things on a rock. And this other paleographic Hebrew must be some hoax or something. Okay, maybe. Maybe there's some kind of a hoax um, that somebody perpetrated over a hundred years ago. Very difficult to imagine how that could happen because, like I said, this paleographic Hebrew would not be easy to, to trick the scholars and people that have, you know, paleographic scholars that have gone through there and have done their research. But, um, if you notice, you see all these looking, like at the very top of the mountain, you see these stacked rocks. There's rocks everywhere. They appear to be some type of altar. We don't know what they are. They're like little pits that are dug. That's looking down the mountain. But they dug these little small pits, like the size of graves or something. It could be altars where they burn things. Um, they could be shelters. But if they're shelters, they're only for sleeping. They're very small. There's one there. The rock stacked around it. And that's, you know, yes, that could be a more recent thing, but it appears to be part of it. And here's the interesting part. At the very top now, 
is an altar or a monument. Some are calling it an altar. That is the name of Jehovah, Y-H-W-H, in ancient paleographic Hebrew, friends. And so, this is probably the most amazing thing about this mountain. After you get to the top and you see this monument with Jehovah's name written there, this is what Hebrew would look like. So it's slightly different. And again, this would be difficult for somebody who to fake. If they were going to fake it, they would probably wrote written it this way. But they didn't. They wrote it slightly different. Others are saying it looks more Phoenician rather than even Hebrew. The reason we're thinking it's more of Hebrew is because it's got the Ten Commandments. It seems to be um, of Israelite in origin. Now, of course, there's some other writings on this monument. This here is 1930. So, obviously, it was there in 1930 by some guy named John. Um, there's other dates I'll show you here. Um, see, there's the somebody named Eva or something. There's John down on the left corner, and on the other side is God's name. Here's another rock. I'll show you in a minute when that picture comes up, uh, some other dates. This is some of the writing there around this altar. This was a, somebody has surveyed it, and they've marked this spot, I guess. I don't know exactly why the government has surveyed it. That appears to, to read 1871. It's difficult to read. That would be over 100 years ago. Um, this particular writing is where somebody said this may be a star map. And you see the, the circular area there with the crab next to it is telling us when the solar system was in the certain sign. Um, that is also, and not very many people know this, it's also a Hebrew sign, a very early way of writing the Hebrew beta or beth, which is the house. And it's like a little maze that goes in. Only in Hebrew, in later Hebrew, it's in the square. We call it Beth. There's a lot of animals and pictures. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of, you know, information about what I've discovered as to why all these animals. Almost looks like a child went up there and drew some animals all over the rock. And then over here is all these, you know, paleographic writings. I mean, what, what, what's the deal? Why are they writing complicated scripts and at the same time all these most people that have seen any of these pictures and gone and investigated, almost everybody is basically only familiar with these little scribbles and pictures. It looks like a child drew. Well, I'm going to give you an explanation as to why they look like this. And I'm going to explain to you why I believe they're not childish drawings by some Native American two, three hundred years ago running around with a rock in his hand, deciding he wants to draw a picture on a rock. They were, they were Scratched very deep into the rocks so they would be preserved, and there's a definite message coming from these rocks. Um, this here is a picture of what looks like maybe a camel. Of course, they didn't have camel, camels in America, but they did in the Middle East. Uh, this looks like, who knows, you know, that could be a serpent of some kind. Here's another look like Greek writing. Looks more Greek than Hebrew. Um, people have noted that this writing does not appear to be the type of writing that was being written 2000, uh, 2000 years ago, but a little bit more like ancient, maybe 25, 2600 years ago. Maybe, um, maybe the as as that same language went down through the Phoenicians, and of course they're the ones with all the boats. There's another one of these. Um, um, whatever they are, altars or pits that they made with the rocks around them, and it's, they're all over the place up there at the top of this mountain. Um, so why then are there all these animals drawn all over these rocks? You see that the way that's written into the stone, it's, it's been there for a long, long time, friends. Where people have come up, say, a hundred years ago and, and written into the stone, and they didn't do a very good job. They just kind of scribbled onto it. It lasts, but you can see it's not as old. This here is very oxidized and deep into the stone, and it was there for a long, long time. 
it's very clear that that's an ancient, ancient scribbling on the rock. There's another picture of what may be an altar or some kind of a fire pit or something. So, why, why are they making these animals on the rock? Well, most of you know, in some of my videos that I've been making, I talk a lot about the zoo, you know, the astrological signs. There's another one of these. Some, some have said that's a, a particular Phoenician type symbol with a man and his ha hands in the air. But when these people went through the, another thing too is before I go on, this is not just some scribbling on a rock somewhere in the middle of nowhere. These same exact type writings are found all the way from, well, all over the United States in this particular area. You see that there is a, what looks like to be a hand. I'm going to show you more hands here coming up. And most of these hands have five fingers, but there is a couple that have six fingers. And I'm going to discuss that with you also. But um, it's very significant, and that is going to have a lot to do with what I believe these scribbles mean. But now think about it. If somebody was faking this, why would they go through the trouble? We know hundreds, at least hundreds of years ago, of doing all of these writings from one end of New Mexico through Utah, all the way up through Colorado and, you know, South Dakota, North Dakota, up through Canada. This is vast. These people in, inhabited this area. Um, and they made these specific drawings. So it would, it would, it, you know, you could imagine that some Native American a few hundred years ago got bored and drew a, a deer somewhere on a rock and we could find it today and say, well, isn't that fun, you know? But they're drawing these same deer and these same dinosaurs and these same humans with their hands in the air or space looking bubble hats, you know, certain stars with jet propulsion coming out of them and these same little lizard like things and and an awful lot of the drawings have this what looks like a sun or a, uh, a cross or um a, a, a like a planet with several moons around it this is almost universal wherever you go you'll find this symbol of the sun different ways to write it now um, the Sumerian tablets have this symbol and we learn from those tablets that when they draw a circle and they have certain amount of spots around it you can count those spots and it will tell you which solar system now if it has 10 planets around it it's our solar system usually because we according to the ancient ones there were 10 planets we still haven't discovered one of them and this is how they would draw um, our solar system but when they would take and, and have a, a circle and they would only have five spots around it or circles that would represent the earth they counted the sun and the moon so that would be mercury venus the sun and the moon and the earth would be the fifth planet or sphere so there's stuff like that 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 determines what these little star signs mean there are different various star signs and each one represents a different planet or it may represent a different solar solar system altogether but in most of these drawings you'll always see the solar system so like i said sometimes it's that circle that goes around almost looks like a maze that was one way that they represented this the solar system and at other times they would use a number of spots to represent which planet or if they used all 10 it would be the entire solar system then they always had nearby and, and this is universal every time you see these markings you will see animals all right they don't draw little teepees or houses very often they draw mostly animals and these solar signs these suns and crosses types of crosses but it, now notice this rock here you see what looks to be like a square on the left side with some sort of a sun shining in the middle and then you've got this squiggly line it's not really squiggly it's up and down 
kind of like what we would use for representing water or like this is above the water that's below the water or it could be just a line saying this is what's on this side and on the other side is something else here is a picture of what looks like a serpent again it's just an animal this is a symbol that's used I mean, in China they use this symbol in Mesoamerica the Aztecs this is a very very prominent symbol of course it would be logical that they would draw serpents because even here in this area in New Mexico we have a lot of rattlesnakes and maybe perhaps that's a rattlesnake but see throughout all of these writings you get these little circles this one has a circle in the middle and a circle around it and this one is worn so well and so much and actually busted on one end that it's difficult to know what that originally was but there may have been much more to that and you know after a couple of thousand years it's not all there there's that symbol with a guy with his hands in the air again and that's also another ancient symbol but sometimes we look at these symbols and we think why are they not very good at drawing you know they make his hands too big they made his feet too long a little stick figure a child could do that but I'm going to show you here in a minute as to why they did this these exaggerations represent certain things they're not trying to show us how well they can draw a man or how well they can draw the Sun you know these are symbols and the symbols represent things here is a Sun and it's got what looks like a cross through it but it's very difficult to tell in this particular picture but there's more coming up this is too faded and it's too difficult to see but there's a various number of circles going in on the inside so um, but you can just see the, how many of these are laying around again here's another one of these I don't know I I call it an altar but I don't know what these are they may have made fires in these things or it could be shelters but like I say I don't know they would have been pretty primitive people if they would live in something like that I think it, it I don't really believe that they're their abodes to live in I think they knew how to make places to live better than that now you see here's another one of the marks and different kinds of animals and lines and circles a lot of circles you'd almost think you know just looking at this that they're just kids kindergarten kids you know playing around with uh, sharp rocks digging very deep in the rock spending hours and hours meticulously drawing stick figures you know what's the point here here's a um, what is it a, a bug a turtle a bug would have more legs so you know is it a turtle is it a lizard upside down why are they making these things there is a reason friends I believe that the archaeologists and people who study these things have not told us because they probably don't want this information out it would really change everything that we know to know the truth about these things here's a, a, a deer not a very good one very very um, you know a child could draw this right but this is just some of the, the drawings that were up on this hill as we go further into the video I'm going to show you some more in-depth drawings from this very area but down at the bottom of the hill some miles away in a place called Petroglyph but here I'm going back down the mountain this is um, the view as you go back down some of the things I want to tell you I'm going to have to wait until later into the video as we get to these other pictures and I can explain to you what some of these pictures might mean but um yeah you know it's kind of interesting because about this point this helicopter came right up this canyon right over my head but there's some pretty intricate drawings but a lot of this is so worn you can't read it very well so um but and then there's scribbling other people have defaced it and drawn over it and um it's kind of a shame and i hope that it is able to be preserved I saw another interesting thing and you know this is just kind of funny I don't know but 
as I was going down the mountain, I saw this rock, and it, it's not a pebble, friend. That's like two or three feet through. It's a huge rock, but it didn't look like any of the other rocks around there, and it was almost round, and it almost looked like a meteorite or something had landed there, and that was just a few feet from all of these other writings, so it was interesting. <clears throat> now, as I got down to the bottom and, and drove away, I went to another area not too far from there. There's a lot of lava strewn all over the bottom of this valley as you're going towards Albuquerque. There's, um, it's just strewn with lava. It's beautiful. It's really interesting to see because um, if you go to a desert where there's nothing but sand, you don't see much growing or even dirt. But here we got nothing but rocks and the most unique things are growing out of these rocks. Not in this particular picture or in, in this area, but not very far, just a few miles from here. It is the most beautiful vegetation growing in and out. Um, the beautiful cactus that have the most... It was spring, of course, just yesterday when I was there. And it, the, 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 everything was blooming. Oh my goodness, it was beautiful. It just blew my mind how wonderful and beautiful it was there. I wanted to stay. In fact, I'm really looking um, into maybe finding property in this area so that I could spend more time investigating it but the things that I'm looking at and investigating really cover the entire Midwest all the way up into Kansas and Colorado and I'm going to show you some stuff about Colorado here in a little bit um, in the Purgatory River Valley that ties in with this these all of these writings from the very bottom of New Mexico and, and who knows maybe it goes down into Mexico I haven't heard anything about that I, you know, never traveled to Mexico, but it goes all the way through Utah and Colorado, Arizona, goes up into Kansas and South Dakota and North Dakota and probably into Canada. And um, so this is not just some isolated picture written on a rock somewhere. There's something to all of this. And I don't believe that from one end of the United States to the other end of the United States, some lonely Native American decided to draw stick figures on the rocks. These things mean something, and I'm going to give you my interpretation here in a moment. But um, the government does draw, you know, they make a few little places where you can go in and look around, and there's some bathrooms and things, and it's very nice. You can take your... Now, this is Petroglyph National Monument, and this is very near where I had been hiking to the top of the um, mountain there where I showed you the, the monument and where it, God's name and, and the paleographic writing. So, but at the bottom they've got it all, you know, they got a little park there. And so they'll take you right to some of the drawings and stuff that are on these rocks. I believe that there are more important places that they don't take you such as the one up on top of the mountain with God's name. They don't have any markers. There's no park there. Now you see this? Now you see this particular drawing here. It's very interesting. There's looks like a serpent. There's a lizard very clearly. Again, on the far left bottom corner, you see the circle within a circle. But look at the far right hand side. And you see the hand sticking up. A very interesting looking hand and what's interesting about it to me of course is there six fingers now a person can speculate they made a mistake that'd probably be unlikely or they were beings that had six fingers now remember in the bible there are the the Anunnaki or the Nephilim were said to have six fingers. This is why I think it's very interesting. But not all of the hands that they have on these things have six fingers. Notice this one. There's one, two, three, four, five fingers on this one. And notice how it's accentuated with this long line. You see a guy, it looks almost like he's upside down. That's important. I'm going to show you another picture with a human upside down. But this hand is way down at the end. 
Now notice that in the middle of this line that extends from the man that's upside down all the way down to the hand with five fingers, in the middle of it, there's what looks like a dinosaur or something. Now, this is not just some crude drawing by some Native American two or three hundred years ago who was bored, because I'm going to show you more of these drawings. Look here again. You've got these circles within circles, and they represent something to do with the stars and our solar system. And then you've got these animals. Now look at the animals here. Do you see the ram? Do you see the scorpion? Well, in astrology, you've got a ram in the sky. You've got a Scorpio in the sky. Now, as I've said in some of my videos, five represents the fifth dimension, the five dimensions that humans live in this physical world. All of these hands that are on this rock have five fingers. And um, there's also some signs there that look like a star system up at the top or a cross. And what looks like a dragon or a serpent with some legs. Here again is the hand, one, two, three, four, five fingers. And there's that Hebrew symbol of Beth. Beth is the B in our language. It's the, it represents the house. And um, what a lot of scholars probably don't know is it's the house of the sun. It's our world. It represents this, this maze of going into the world in this three-dimensional world. And they use it throughout almost all of the languages. Here are some symbols that um, might have something to do with some of these symbols on the rock. These animals, the ram or the deer representing uh, the messenger of the gods. These were, you know, standard meanings for some of the Mesoamerica Aztec type writings. Um, the salamander was the god of the rain. And there's these various interpretations that others have come to. But now look at this rock. There's that circle again that we're talking about, the house. In Hebrew, it's more square, but it's still that same maze going in. And it represents the house. Now, on one side, again, is an animal. And on the other side is another animal. This is an astrological sign. See, there's another one. This is astrology. They're trying to tell us something about the stars when they were here and probably why they were here and where they came from this is not just some you know again in a little bit i'm going to show you some more drawings and i'm going to show you why they accentuate certain things and make it look like stick fingers because they're not interested in drawing a man for you to show you how well they can draw people they're accentuating their hands they're accentuating their necks they're accentuating certain things in order to tell you things through symbol. See this? These, these animals are all over. And must, must, many of these things have been busted. These circular star system signs are all over the place. It's very important that we understand this is about astrology. And this is about mapping where they are, who they are, where they came from. So. Now, this particular, I don't know, this almost looks like an ant to me, but he's got like human feet or something with four, you know, who knows? Some of these writings is very difficult to understand. This almost could be like Quetzalcoatl, the, the you know, Indian Aztec god of, of uh, a feathered serpent. Um, some of these probably represent flight and the gods that came from the sky. Um... Others almost look like masks and, uh, again, more animals. Now look at this one. This is very important because there's no question that it's a star. There's a face in the middle and there's like hands or legs coming out the bottom. But at the back of the star, it looks almost as if the star's going. Now it could be a meteorite, but it looks like it's jet propulsion. It's going down. And it's, you know, it, it, it's a very good representation of people coming from the stars. There's a person's face in the star. And notice that as it's coming down the rock, there's what 
looks like a man in a in a very big suit with a bird face staring at it. This is very similar to the writings that we found in the Sumerian tablets. The bird faced men were people who had to wear suits that could that they, they represented as a bird because they came from the sky. And then over to the left further is this this ancient symbol of the snake. Now here again is this same circular star in the middle. There seems to be two people either look like they're throwing a javelin at it or, or perhaps they're playing a flute or I don't know. But they're looking at this star system. And then down at the right you see that ancient sun phoenix sign like the Egyptians used to have. And there's a man looking into that symbol or what appears to me appears to me to be you know very close to the egyptian sun sign with the with the feathered serpent there very similar to the aztec feathered serpent and then in the middle you see another little guy looks like he's got a little space suit and he's got two antennae very interesting then you get one of these pictures and it's like all right what is that a lizard and a bird okay it doesn't seem to mean a whole lot but then you get pictures like this, which is obviously that same cross on the left. And on to the right, at the very bottom, you see what looks to be a pyramid. They didn't have pyramids in this area, right? They didn't have pyramids. Why are they drawing pyramids? Were they, you know, were there pyramids in this area that are no longer there, that aren't standing anymore? Some of these writings are very, very complicated. And I believe this here should be translated by somebody they should spend some time and really figure out what all this is saying because i know it has to do with uh, star charts and astrological zodiacal signs there could be a great deal to learn if somebody would get busy and try to figure this out but i believe again you've got that star sign in the middle and people would look like helmets and now this is the one that I was telling you about earlier. All right, now you see there, pretty much in the middle of the picture is that same circle thing. This one's got like one, two, three bands. It's not exactly the same as some of the others. But then at the bottom of that circle, it looks almost like a wave of or water. But you see there's a, to the left there's a little guy that's upside down and the guy that's upside down is next to a, a circle with only one circle in the middle I interpret that to mean that these are two different peoples the guy that's the larger man standing upright he's standing near the circles with three dimensions with I believe represents our universe the other little man is upside down and all backwards and he's in a world that is um, slightly inferior. Here's another one of these sun signs. Like there's a man in the moon thing, you know. Throughout all of the world, you'll see these sun signs. This one's also interesting because not only does it have the cross in the middle, but it's got a whole bunch of little circles around it, which represents probably something to do with some particular star system. There are rocks like this throughout the desert, throughout New Mexico, and I'm sure many other states. I live here, and they're very complicated drawings. But I am certain that these, all these animals have, have directly to do with the astrology. And um, some people have tried to draw what they've seen on the rock. It's very complicated, some of these drawings. And... I don't think at this point in time we can say that we know this is just insignificant little drawings that some children did three or four hundred years ago. Some Native American children. You know, this is not insignificant. We need to know what this means. This is our history. They're trying to tell us something. When they put Paleographic Hebrew on a rock, they're trying to tell us something. These marks mean something. They're symbols. It's a language. There are different animals that represent different sun signs. There's always in every one of these drawings some type of a solar disk sign. And I believe that sign is the same as the Hebrew Beth. 
and it is the house of the sun. Here is again these people with their hands in the air. And again, five fingers on the hands. This is the three-dimensional world that we live in. And they're always got their hands in the air. They're talking about accentuating their hands and their arms. They're saying that they're human. They live in this world, in this three-dimensional world. But then you've got drawings like this that it's really the epitome of what I'm trying to say. If you were going to draw something so that future generations would know, and it, you, you, first of all, you'd be drawing something that's very important. You're not going to be scribbling on there that, oh, you know, Barney and you had a beer that day. No, you're going to be putting down something that's very important. You're not going to be able to write it in language because our language is going to be different than their language. They knew that this was something that had to be done symbolically and simply. Just like, you know, we hear about people that put a note in a bottle and send it off to sea. Well, they're not going to write a book. They're just going to write, I love you, or whoever finds this, this is where I live. Same thing that we do when we send messages out to the stars. Maybe it's going to be something simple like Morse code, and we're going to say something very simple, like this is who we are, this is where we came from, this is who we are, where we live. Very simple information, and that's what this is, friends. This particular sign right here, this drawing on a rock, is very important and it really explains what I'm trying to say in this video. You see in this circle, in the middle of the circle, is a, a small circle with lines and little balls at the end. That particular symbol in the middle has five, what I would say like planets circling a central sun. I'm sorry, ten. There's ten of them that circle that central sun. That has got to be a representation of our solar system. The Sumerian tablets talk about there being ten planets. We haven't found the tenth planet yet. But this was known by all the ancient peoples, whether in Samaria or the Aztecs or any other place. They knew that there were ten planets in this solar system. And around that is what looks like a little bird or a cross and there's another little sign with a circle and one two three four five again little circles which I believe represents the fifth dimension and around that is a circle with like teeth or jaws you know going pointing inward like you know you don't get out of this we can come in but it's very difficult to get out you're in your solar system which is a five-dimensional world and it's very difficult to get out. Um, then there's, you know, little marks that have been broken off and laying somewhere, and we don't know exactly what it means. It doesn't go to anything. But again, you've got these animals that are just strewn all over. What, you know, very yes, it's very likely that they're trying to say in some of these drawings that maybe this is their diet. That could be something that they were saying. But look at this one. You see these little Beth or houses? They're all over that rock. Now here's that that one picture that I was thinking about when I was telling you how they accentuate the hands and the feet. This particular man has five fingers. But instead of thinking, well, boy, they were very crude. They didn't know how to draw very well. No, they were not trying to prove to us that they were very good artists. What they were trying to do is accentuate the hands to let us know that this was a human with five fingers in the fifth dimensional world that we live in. And over on the left side of the screen, you'll see what looks like a deer or horse. But these writings are just all over, up and down through New Mexico. And a lot of them are at the base of this particular mountain that I walked on. Here's one of the rocks with a lot of these animals. You notice that Several of the animals on this rock are a, a ram. A ram is one of the very prominent figures in the zodiac. And there's also what looks to be like the sun sign there on the left hand corner of that big rock. There's also what appears to be an upside down animal. And that's the case when a person looks into the sky and you know the heavens revolve, sometimes the animals appear to be upside down. And it's just below and to the left of that 
animal it's upside down that you see that sun sign again. This is astrology, friends. And um, people should be trying to figure out what this means. We can probably get a date for who these people are, where they came from, and what they were here for if we do more research into these signs with this in mind. But these signs are everywhere, friends. And I'm about to show you some more information to even pinpoint what these things mean even better than that. But just look at the information that's on these stones. Now notice this one. This is very interesting. This appears to be a man with two ears. You say, why would they make a man with two ears looking like a rabbit? Well, they got they want you to to understand to put your attention on his ears. They're accentuating the ears for a reason. You notice that the one ear that's close to that spaceship, which is like a star with a the same starship that we saw before. That ear, just like in, you know, cartoons that we watch with, you know, you know how Wiley e. Coyote would be accentuated certain parts. They would stick their ear up and they would tilt it back if they were listening real carefully. Well, this alien with five fingers, he's got his ear listening very carefully to what the person in the starship is telling him. They're able to communicate with the stars, and that's what they're telling us there. Or perhaps with just the star ships. But this is... Here's another picture of the feathered serpent or the star people. People that could fly. They came and spoke to them. Told them what to, what to do and gave them information. You see the different star systems above their heads. The various... one person seems to be flying towards the, the other star systems. This is a man that's got a star for a head and he's got two arrows pointing in different directions and a little bird in his heart. If that doesn't represent a star man, I don't know what does. And I was telling you also about uh, the Purgatory River. That's up in Colorado. Now see, I, this, these, all these writings just, they're everywhere. I know there's some writings and I'm going to do some investigations over the next few months and years, you know, the best I can, I'm going to try to investigate all this. But I haven't gotten everywhere so far. This is Purgatory River up in Colorado. And there's, this is important. That's why I put it in this video. Because there are whole verses from the Hebrew language written on these canyons. Just like there is over here. And this puts an end to any speculation that the one in uh, New Mexico with the Paleographic Ten Commandments written there. Is some kind of a fraud because it's the same paleographic letters that are strewn all over the desert canyons all the way at least here into Colorado and it's going to give us a little more explanation as to what these things mean they're just as you go along this river you see them all the same writings you know the same starship people same star symbols and the same animals all over the rocks. It's the same people that did this this thing. So all of these Native Americans from Kansas and North Dakota all the way down into Mexico, they were either the same people with the same understanding or they were, you know, something else. Something from the stars wrote these. But um, there's an indication here that I'm going to show you that it was a group of people that lived here in this area all the way through our great nation. And one could speculate that, you know, we don't have any great pyramids here. And, um, you know, I covered in another video why they built the pyramids. There were reasons that they built those pyramids. and They were so huge. They had to build them to land their ships there. And they were so huge that they were built with such big stones that they still survived. But that doesn't mean that there weren't people here in America that had great civilizations. Of course, we know the ones that existed in South America. But 
it doesn't mean that there weren't great civilizations here in North America. And um, some have speculated that these people then must have been Hebrew because there's quite a bit of Hebrew writing all over the walls of the canyons all the way down. But the interesting thing about this is that, as we know, the Aztecs and the Mayas and those people, they worshipped what they called like a feather serpent, Quetzalcoatl, and they dressed up in feathers. Now, I don't think a lot of people, you know, realize it, but we came here to to the North Americans and there was the Indians that, that lived here, the Native Americans. They also dressed up with these feathers. They still remembered the gods from the other planets, the star gods that dressed in these feathers. Now, they, they didn't dress in feathers. This is very symbolic. Feathers represent birds and birds fly. And they were the feathered serpent because... Um, the serpent represents something very awful and bad. And it wasn't the people, the Native, the Native Americans that, that sacrificed their children on altars. Just like it wasn't over there in, in the land of the Iraqis and the Hebrews. No, it was these gods, these Anunnaki that came down that demanded sacrifice and began these rituals and religious paraphernalia. And the people were told and taught and forced to worship them. And they were given all these symbols. But um, what's also very interesting is that this Phoenician type language, this ancient Hebrew, was here in America. One of the people that you might not even have ever heard about, and this is over in California. I've done a lot of research on this. I've explored this entire area where they found him uh, because that's where I was born and raised. Uh, my father was born and raised in that area, and I know the very the area very well where they found this man. Um, nobody knows his name. He never gave his name, but he was an, a Native American that survived until the, the white man went over there in the gold rush days. And he um, wasn't there very long ago, because that's about the, the last place where the European man finally reached. And at the last date that we know, like in the 1940s. And so they found this guy and, they, and you know, he didn't speak English, of course, or anything. So they, they got people to go down there and try and figure out if they could communicate with him. Well, after a while, they realized that this man spoke some kind of Hebrew. That's why they call him Ishi. Because in Hebrew, Ishi means man. When they asked him his name, in all different languages they tried, he never would tell them. Finally, the guy said some word in Hebrew, and this Indian, this Native American, looked up, and he recognized the word, and he said, okay, well, let's try Hebrew, so he said, they started communicating, he said, what's your name? He says, I'm Ishi, or I'm man, and so he got the name Ishi. So you see that the Hebrew language was something that the Indian people spoke, and I don't mean, you know, some of the recent Indian languages like Navajo or something like that. Um, some of the Native Americans that live on this continent now are only able to remember back a few years, you know. They don't know where their ancestors came from or they're not telling a lot. Um, I doubt whether their a lot of their knowledge has been preserved, but we can piece a lot of this together with some of the rocks and the carvings and the petroglyphs and the fact that Hebrew writing is written all over the walls along some of the caves and canyons throughout America. And the fact that the last American Indian that they found in California spoke Hebrew. And this was Ishi, a very interesting fellow, to say the least. But as for this Purgatory River Canyon, with all the writings that are there, this is very, very fascinating. And this is going to give us a lot of insight. And this is not known, friends. You're going to go out there and search the web and search all the books in the library. And you're not going to find any information on this. Um, very little. Very little information. But there are some people that are beginning to find this out. It's beginning to leak out. And um, it tends to corroborate some of the story that you might, that, you know, you've ever heard of the Book of Mormon. Um, that Joseph Smith said that he translated in 1830. 
Well, it seems to corroborate at least partial, partially his story. So um, that's another avenue that one might pursue and do investigation with. But there is absolute proof that the Indian peoples of way back, now we're talking prior to 2000 years ago, did speak Hebrew. Now this is some of the writing that they found on the walls. And this is the translation. And it uses the word El for God, Yahweh, just like it did there in uh, that place there in New Mexico where with the, the name of God on that monument. This is the translation that they are giving for some of the writings that they're finding there on the walls in the Purgatory River Valley canyons. This is amazing, friends. It's absolutely amazing. Right there on the walls, scribbled all over, been there for thousands of years. Isn't it odd that our scientists and archaeologists aren't doing any investigation, aren't telling us anything about this, but it's they're leaving it up to people who really don't, you know, have the equipment or, you know, the resources to try and get this information out to you. But there's the writing, friends. This is not simple scribbles by some bored Indian. And there's those people with their hands in the air. We've got to figure out what this means, this sun sign, these animals, these astrological signs. But that's really all I've got to say this week, friends. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you got something out of it. And um, if any of you want to know more about these petroglyphs and all of these writings, I suggest you get you a camera, get in your car and go out to Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, somewhere out in there and get some pictures and do some investigation and get out there and, you know, figure all this stuff out. We need more people looking into this. Um, that's all I got to say. You guys have a great week. This is David Vos. I'm signing out.